This is Get Real with Bob and Stacy, the show that helps you learn about the mortgage and real estate markets. Get the inside scoop from their expert list of guests and have some fun along the way. Now, here's Bob Callagher and Stacy Alcorn. Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real with Bob and Stacy. You're joining us for our Leaders and Legends segment. And our first guest today is Marjorie Goodson, author of the coffee table book, MG. Welcome to the show, Marjorie. Thank you so much, Bob. Great to be on the show. So I want to give everybody a little more background on Marjorie. Um, she is the daughter of Mark Goodson, creator, producer of some of the most popular game shows in the history of TV. Family Feud, The Price is Right, Match Game, To Tell the Truth, Beat the Clock. She recently published her first luxury coffee book called MG. She has been seen in Cosmo, Lifestyle Magazine, and Upscale Living Magazine. Uh, she lives in Beverly Hills. Uh, the book, and by the way, for anybody listening to our program, my bio is going to do not enough justice. You have to go to her website, MarjorieGoodson.com, because the pictures will just absolutely pull you in. Uh, but the book includes 153 commanding and empowering images by noted Romanian-born art and fashion photographer Andrea Ratatouille. I probably screwed that up, but (laughs) (laughs) she has captured in glorious color, dramatic black and white and stimulating tones, the magnetic and glorious 55-year-old Goodson. Holy cow, that's you, Marjorie, these pictures that that I saw? That is me. Holy Holy cow. <laughs> I didn't even realize that until as I was reading this. But I was, oh my that's why anybody listening has to oh go to Marjorie's website, MarjorieGoodson.com. So first of all, wow. Tell us all about the book, Marjorie. Thank you so much. First of all, the, the response, I'm not even sure I need to say anything else. I could just hang up right yeah. now and, and I'm in heaven. <laughs> so, so thank you for that. It's always wonderful to hear yourself sort of coming back at yourself. Um, but no, I, you know, I was sort of thinking about this because it's been asked to me, you know, why MG, why did you do it in the middle of your life? You know, and certainly the book itself, you know, the goal of to create art was certainly there. I've always been a dancer since I was a little girl. So the opportunity, uh, when my daughter went off to college and of course I had to deal with the empty nest syndrome, which so many Mm -hmm. women have to deal with. And I thought, well, I'll throw myself back into ballet, which was my first love of my life, and my second Mm -hmm. love being jazz. And I did that for about two and a half years. And then the idea of this book came to me because when my daughter had gone off to college, I had created these coffee table albums that were really more like photographs of her horseback riding. She's an amazing equestrian. So Mm -hmm. so I remember doing that, and I thought, hmm, you know, I could do something like that, but for dance. But, of course, never Mm -hmm. really realizing the extent and and what it would take for me to do that. And it was really going to just be one book. It never was meant to be published. And so when I began working with Andrea Raditoyu, because it's still taking me Mm -hmm. forever to figure out her name, Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, the amazing Torsten Witt, who is um, from La La Land, who does the hair and makeup, and uh, Mm -hmm. the girl with the dragon tattoo. I have such an amazing dream team. Um, You know, we, we got together, and this book started to come about of me dancing and and um and doing different you know different uh images and different types of imagery i didn't want it just to be dance because at my age at 50 you know i'm not a young ingenue anymore you know i'm i'm gritty i'm edgy i'm provocative you know and i think that all comes from just years of living and and doing mm-hmm. and um so i wanted to 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 um, show me at the age that I was, which was 50. And it did, and I'm so proud of it. And I, uh, I'm so proud of it. In fact, I'm, I'm going to torture myself, and I'm doing another book called MG2, so, uh, which is wow. even more insane and uh, deals with a lot of paint because I'm also an artist, and I, I paint. A lot of people don't know that. but uh, So I wanted to use uh, paint as my, what I call my dance partner. So that's going to mm-hmm. be a lot of fun and very messy. So do you still dance? Oh, I do. Oh, absolutely. I, I take um, ballet and I, uh, and I do mostly jazz classes now. Um, so but tell I have me, been injured. Like, I've been injured, so it's, it's a little difficult. Okay. Because I want your legs. Like, is that from, <laughs> is that from, so for example, like I've never been to a bar class, but bar is 
off of like ballet, correct? Yes, yes. It's uh, a wonderful combination of the, the sense of, of it brings in that dance element. So working at the bar, doing plies, uh, yes. doing leg extensions. Um, a very good friend of mine named Marnie Alton, who is amazing out here, if you ever come out to Los Angeles, and she does an amazing bar class and is very sort uh-huh. of spiritual and, and sort of, it just it incorporates everything the mind the body and all of that so right. um but i i do you know strictly jazz classes and then i do a thing called gyrotonic which i don't know if a lot of people know about which was mm-hmm. developed by a dancer for the spinal health and mm-hmm. because he had a spinal injury so i do that i train and uh pretty much torture myself stacy you know on a, yes. on a daily basis i don't stop moving <laughs> yes but you can see it in in the pictures. They're phenomenal. Now Thank I know that so this book this book is somehow tra- um somehow connected or you connected it to the Actors Fund Career Transition for Dancers program. Can you tell us about that program and why you support them? Yes. Well, um uh this well actually it's for my second book coming up but um it's it's really when i was i've always been very philanthropic and mm-hmm. i think one of the things was is that when i started creating my own art i also wanted to uh, once i i saw the reception of how this book was uh being seen and that i could actually have a voice with this book i really wanted to give back and so i thought what better, someone told me about the career transition for da- for dancers and that it was under the umbrella of the Actors Fund. And I was like, bingo, like this couldn't mm-hmm. be more perfect for me because mm-hmm. as a dancer, someone who is also in transition in her life, moving through her life, um, I thought this is perfect. And what it is, is programs that, that, that deal with, um, for dancers who have been dancers, and professional and, you know, otherwise other means, and they're moving out of that career and looking for another career, another another opportunity in their life. And what it does is it sort of allows this seamless transition, both, you know, psychologically and, you know, and otherwise to, to go into another phase in your life. And I thought, this is so custom made for me, I cannot... I can't stand it. Like you just sort of wait for those gifts. And because Mm -hmm. you go out and you think, I want to do something that has meaning for me and that if I talk about it, it's really going to speak to me. And so when someone told me about it, I was like, I'm done. Like this is just Mm -hmm. perfect for me. And it really um, tells me about, you know, where I'm at in my life because that's what I feel, that I've reinvented my life after my daughter went off to college Mm-hmm. And um, that it, that art never has to stop. Your passion never has to stop. That you can continue at any age. Because I say, you know, art has no rule books. There's no like, right. oh, I'm 50 now or I'm 60 now, and you know, you can do it at any age. What does dancing mean to you? And what do you think about? Like, I'm 46 and I've never danced. What do you think about people getting into it later in life? Well, I think that that movement, no matter what you do, is important. Mm -hmm. So uh, naturally for me, dance is my first love. I always say try it. You know, obviously Mm -hmm. it's it's difficult to do ballet, certainly. But, Mm -hmm. but, you know, something like jazz or hip-hop is so fun. I'm always Mm -hmm. like, just get into it. I mean, there's so many different uh, styles now that absolutely I think any kind of movement is important. And 46, you're a baby, Stacey. Come on. Let's Mm -hmm. listen. You know, it's great. You would love it. You would absolutely love Mm -hmm. it. And as far as dance, for me, it's my life. It's my breath. It's my oxygen. I can't. I can't even imagine not doing it. Right. Now, it looks like you have some really cool locations and all the photography, just looking at the samples that you have on the website. Is there anything significant about each of the locations that you chose? They're significant in that um, that I wanted something that had sort of a gritty, textural element to them and so very architectural so for example some of them were downtown uh dealing with cement and sort of this edgy raw sort of slightly dirty element um somewhere at the beach so you're dealing with rocks and water but again very textural very earthy 
um, loved working in the sand because there's a there's a picture of me literally after I'd been thrown in the ocean, you know, tossed around like a you know like I was in the dryer, mm-hmm. and I was so tired and I sort of fell over into the sand. And just out of sheer exhaustion, and, the, and Andrea took a picture of me just with my head in the sand and dirty in my hair. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm in love with this photograph because it was so real and so authentic. And I think that was what I wanted to capture um, in the book was this sort of this gritty, earthy, physical sense. And by going to different places downtown, we were in a warehouse that was slightly raw and edgy. I think we were able to capture that. Wow, absolutely, just on the pictures that I've seen. And then what about the costumes? Because it looks like every picture has just not only a really cool location, but also like a costume theme. Right. Well, some um, some were mine. Some were, you know, just even just an mm-hmm. element of like a, a shirt. Some I had nothing on. So, you know, I, mm-hmm. I love that sort of um, what I called. I really wanted to celebrate the body physical, and so I wanted that whatever I was wearing to really show the body, but not in a sort of um, sexy way, but really just from a physical standpoint that it would allow me to show the work that I had done because one mm-hmm. of the, the elements to sort of backtrack that it was very important to me as, as a woman in my fifties that I needed and I wanted for myself to show that I didn't just wake up one morning and go, Oh, I think I'm going to take some pictures, you mm-hmm. know, and just throw on these costumes like a, like a circus act, but that, that there was work behind it and the body, right. the muscles, the tone that was going to be my calling card to say, Oh, Oh, she's not kidding around here. She really right. does do this. Like this, this didn't just happen overnight. She didn't put on some stockings and go to, um, you know, and just hire someone and say, oh, you know, I'm going to stick my leg up in the air. But that, oh, there's mm-hmm. really work behind this. So, right. so the costumes were one. Like for example, there's a something a nod to Broadway because um, I've always loved Bob Fosse. Um, you know, I grew up in New York. I grew up around theater, and so that, there's that picture of me in a jacket with a cigarette and a, and a fedora mm-hmm. outside. We were actually in an alleyway, and I won't even tell you what that smelled like. That was very scary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, but mm-hmm. sort of have that sort of backstage, authentic feel to it. So, yeah, wow. it, was, it was a fun character development for me. So I think so many women would say to themselves, like, who am I to expose my talents to the world? Like, what does it take for you to push push through your own personal limiting beliefs? And any words of advice for other women on just having the confidence to try something or to expose their beauty, their talent to the world? Well, first let me begin by saying that that I was one of those women, and I still am one of those women, and that Mm -hmm. I don't think even whenever you're pushing your art that it ever gets any easier because you're always Mm -hmm. sort of up in the ante, and that if you do have those butterflies, the fear, that's part of the equation that to expect to do something that you care about or love or certainly put yourself out there on the line. Um, mm-hmm. is is intimidating. It's it's basically asking of yourself and of the world, you know, accept my art. Will I be good enough? I mean, these are questions that we ask ourselves daily, and they're natural and they're normal. And the, the thing is not, you know, not to try to rid yourself of your fear, but to bring your fear along with you, to do it in spite of your fear. Because I can right. tell you, I mean, every time before I do a photo shoot, I cry. I cry. Right. Mm-hmm. because it's scary wow. you know you just don't you don't know what you know well this time will I will I do the right thing so, right. so that fear is just part of it and I say go for it jump in right. there do your art because what you're going to get at the other side of that rainbow and that sounds so corny but honest mm-hmm. to God is 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 this empowerment this fulfillment this oh my God moment where you say I can't believe I did it and that, right. that sort of self-esteem that happens that, that um, you know, you, you just can't even, that filling up your right. creative tank. There's, it's an undescribable feeling, but it only comes from doing it. You can't think about it, and you can't wait until what I call the confidence fairy, which doesn't exist, by the way. 
comes right. and sprinkles confidence in your eyes. As I say, I still don't have confidence. I do it. Mm-hmm. I'm always doing it sort of with this, like, oh, God, you know, I don't know, and I'm scared. And But you just jump in, and it really is right. just the most gratifying feeling. I mean, I shake after I do it. I'm always crying after That's every awesome. every photo shoot I do. I break down and I cry because I'm like, I look back and I go, my God, I did that. And right. it's, it's, an, it's just remarkable. Wow. All right. We only have two minutes left. And I know that when I saw your information come through, I did Google your father, Mark Goodson. We mentioned him at the beginning. He was He's basically an icon in the television world. Tell us the one, and I'm sure there are a bunch, but tell us one key thing that you learned growing up with a TV icon. Well, I I grew up with a man that was hardworking, creative, mm-hmm. loving, who never believed in taking shortcuts. His his basic, you know, primary work ethic was just that you had to, you know, approach everything as it was. Um, mm-hmm. And he just worked very, very hard, and um, was fair and honest. And that's how he approached his life. That's how he mm-hmm. approached fatherhood. That's how he approached his work. And um, he never stopped. He never rested on his laurels. And I think, um, um, you know, with his passing, um, you know, I've adopted those, those, those philosophies and I live and right. breathe his words every day he lives with me inside of me that's you know awesome. and, and, and to never stop just to keep going that's great so thank you so much for joining us today Marjorie anybody listening please go to her website uh, Marjorie Goodson G-O-O-D-S-O-N dot com Marjorie Goodson dot com check out some of the photos and all the information's on there so you can download or to go to Amazon Barnes and Noble uh, Books a Million, Indie Bound, to pick up a copy of her incredible uh, coffee table book, MG. Thank you so much, Marjorie. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Bob. It's Thanks, Marjorie. Great. Thank you for letting me carry on. <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome. It was great having you. Thank you so We're much. I take a really quick appreciate it. Break. You're very welcome. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more Get Real after this. <laughs> 